Under eye bags are more noticeable after Juvederm. Do you have any suggestions? Hello. I had Juvederm injections and it lasted for approximately six months. It seems like my eye bags became more noticeable, even an extra crease on my cheek. Maybe this is my imagination. The doctor told me all along that a surgical procedure would be best due to the puffiness. Also, I was bruised for four days and needed to miss work. I would consider going back to do this, but the bruising is too much. Would you have any suggestions? Thank you for your question. You submitted your question with a photo, and you describe in your question that you underwent Juvederm injection under your eyes to help the appearance of under eye bags, which appears to have made the appearance worse. And further, you describe having four days worth of bruising after the original injection that, such that you had to miss work. And it was suggested to you by the doctor to undergo surgery uh, because of the uh, presence of under eye bags. And further, you're naturally questioning whether or not to do the injections or what to do moving forward. You describe also that you developed an extra crease on your cheek. Well, I can certainly share with you my guidance to patients who have had very similar um, experiences uh, who come to me from all over because of this new option for helping people with under eye bags with injectable fillers. A little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years, helping people with facial appearance and the under eye area and eye aesthetics has been a significant part of my practice for this time and certainly I recognize as an expert the challenges that many patients have when they seek different options to help their under eye area. So to begin with, in situations like yours, I have more often than not seen a situation where although it's been six months or even a year or longer from the point when a patient had an injectable filler under the eyes, that when they feel like their under eye bags are worsened or that it's un they want to know what to do next, I find it's generally helpful to first examine the patient and if there is any question as to whether or not there's filler present, a lot of times it can be elucidated when a person is looking upward. And if it's fat, it's often easy to tell because the fat pockets push forward. But that being said, it is very common for me to first just try to dissolve any residual filler that's present. It is not unusual for a hyaluronic acid filler uh, to remain much longer and in fact kind of settle in different tissue planes in a way that can create this baggy appearance. A lot of times it is very helpful to then be able to do that to then see what is truly the underlying anatomy. A lot of times when people have under eye bags and they get filler, those under eye bags can become worsened. It's about making the right choice for the right um, situation. In my practice, if someone has mild puffiness under their eyes and in a scenario where they don't have time to have surgery, well, we can certainly place filler in the tear trough area to try to blend that natural uh, a contrast between the puffiness and the depression. However, if someone has significant puffiness, well, the definitive procedure is to do surgery, and that is a procedure such as transconjunctival blepharoplasty. This is a procedure that's done routinely in our practice through using local anesthesia with light sedation. It's done from the inside of the eye to address the puffiness. And essentially, it may be in your situation that your, your, your issue has to be dealt with from different angles. So I think there's also an opportunity, and even though there's a limited view, 
I look at your eye and the cheek area and I feel like there's also probably some opportunity for some volume enhancement in the cheek area to try to maximize the appearance of the eyes. But that's something that I think can be discussed later after you, it's clear what your true anatomy is. I think that one of the things that is critically important is to have a really good global understanding of the aesthetics of your eye and cheek area when you have a consultation. A lot of times people get in trouble because if their cheek projection is relatively shallow, then placement of a filler in the tear trough without any support in the cheek creates kind of like a ledge with, without support and so there ends up becoming this kind of a um, crescent moon kind of or puffiness that ultimately results because there is no continuity. So I think that although this is in the absence of a physical examination, it's very important before you make a decision about whether or not to do surgery is to determine what is truly the cause of what, the way you appear right now. The clue that speaks to me is that you describe getting another crease in your cheek. That to me means as volume. That volume is either fat, it, it may be filler, or it may be a combination of both. And so it is, in my opinion, and generally my practice, to first use hyaluronidase to dissolve any filler in this area and, and, and reveal what is the true anatomy and then start from, start from scratch. So meet, meet with your doctor who performed this, discuss this with them. Uh, if, you, if you're not sure about whether or not you're as comfortable or confident about uh, this doctor, then you have another consultation. Uh, also to address the question about bruising after uh, under eye filler, certainly that is, um, that is a, not an unusual story. Uh, in my practice, when I, do, when I place under eye fillers, I actually use something called blunt cannulas and I rarely get bruising and it's just a matter of technique and experience that I think helps um, it helps every doctor do their procedure the way they feel most comfortable. Uh, but I would say that in the, in the scenario that you're describing, that it would not be surprising to me if the doctor had done injections directly using a needle. And when you do it that way, you can sometimes disrupt some vessels along the way. And, or, and if you do multiple injections, which is very common, you can understand why you had bruising. Um, I would say that from that perspective, you also have options, so you don't have to think that doing filler under the eyes always means bruising. Certainly, no, more, no physician is immune to bru uh, ha having patients who bruise, but you work with probability. And so in my practice, the use of blunt cannulas and creating this type of fill in this area has worked out pretty successfully in the, in the way I approach it, and that way, at least bruising is minimized. I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.